Everyone, what we have here today is the full-length adventure where Susie and I, we go to New Mexico, Arizona, and we have an awesome time. This is a great trip. This is the full-length movie. It's over two hours long, and we're excited to share this with you all. Don't forget about Utah, because we went there as well, and we did all that traveling in the Toyota Tundra. We are about to leave, so when you guys see this full-length movie and this little clip, we will be in Colorado hiking and hopefully having some epic adventures. Anyway, make sure to notice how we travel in the truck. So when you see the adventure that will be coming up, we will be in a different vehicle. That's right, folks. Susie has a new van. Things are definitely going to change as far as our overlanding goes. So the next adventure that's coming up, it's going to be different. So get ready. So enjoy this full length movie. We had an awesome time. My favorite part, I was thinking about this, we had just gotten done with Valley of the Gods, and we were basically like moving from campsite to campsite, trying to get away from the wind. And there's a scene, we're in the back of the truck, we're eating dinner, and this wave of sand flies right into the vehicle. It is hilarious. <laughs> into our faces. <laughs> into our food. Yeah, into our mouths. I think we were eating tacos. Yeah. But anyway, traveling in the van is going to be totally different. Even though our setup is essentially the same, I hope you guys stay tuned to see how we do it in the van and how it works. I'm super excited because this time there won't be any sand flying into my face. We'll see about that. All right, everybody. Enjoy the episode. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, where Susie and I are out for our very first epic road trip of 2021. That's right, everyone. We are hitting the road, and our final destination will be in Utah. We will be stopping at numerous places. We will be exploring parts of New Mexico, Colorado. I mean, who knows what we're going to get into. It's going to be a couple of weeks of traveling and exploring. With this adventure, everyone, we are going to show you all and share with you all some really, really cool things. Places that you may have never seen before. Places that look like they are like on different planets. It is going to be awesome, and I can't wait. Everyone, the adventure begins now. Listen to the purr of that V8, folks. The new exhaust sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It does. It is loud. <laughs> awesome for me, bad for you. Sorry about that. I like having a good exhaust on my trucks. So previously, I had Flowmasters. They rusted out, and I put Flowmasters back on it. Sounds even better. Just in case you do not know, this is Drifter, our 2011 Toyota Tundra, and this is our home for the next couple of weeks. Inside of this truck is everything that we need to survive, to have a great time, to be comfortable. This is not the first time that we've overlanded in this truck. We went to Colorado last year for a quick trip. Really, we were forced out because of the wildfires. That trip was not as long as we would have liked for it to be. And that's how road trips go. You have to be flexible. Now, Susie brings up a great point. You have to be flexible when it comes to your road trips. Sometimes you won't be able to make the mileage that you want to, or a place will be too busy. For Susie and I, it's all about solitude, peace and quiet. Coronavirus is still a thing, so we want to stay away from everybody. <laughs> we don't want to take any chances. 
So um, yeah, you have to be flexible. What we are doing works for us and we are doing it in a manner where we feel safe and good about things. We use our truck and we like to really be stealthy and incognito as we're traveling. You don't look at this truck and think, oh, those people are overlanding and sleeping in their vehicle. So hopefully you can pick up on tips and tricks that we do so you are able to travel the country in the same way. It's been a couple of years now since we've been able to take a flight and I'm not sure that's going to change anytime soon. I'm not ready to fly and we will have to keep driving across the country to explore. I personally would not get on an airplane for anything. <laughs> not unless like life and death matters were on hand. But Plus, it is much more of an adventure to drive. We are going to see so many crazy things, crazy people. I mean, we started out the trip and we saw that little Toyota truck that had been seriously modified in the worst way possible. But that thing was covered. Well, it had a CB antenna that had balls all over it. Then it had a pair of balls hanging from the back. It had some jacked up exhaust. The tires were super wide. The suspension was broken, so the backside was like almost touching the ground. It made no sense. <laughs> it made no sense. When you're on the road, you will see some crazy stuff, some crazy people, and I love it. I love it. slowdown on the interstate pretty typical as there's a lot of wrecks and things like that we are slowly moving we have not come to a complete stop yet but after we get through this we are gonna look for a place to stop and have lunch now here's a tip for you all whenever you come up to a slowdown turn on your hazard lights for the vehicles behind you they may not notice that a slowdown is taking place so turn on your blinkers then you can turn them off once the vehicle behind you is slowing down as well it's a great way to prevent getting rear-ended. Oftentimes people don't see brake lights, but they will notice the yellow hazard lights. Susie, it's lunchtime. It is lunchtime. At our favorite place. We are at a rest area, someplace in Tennessee. So far, the adventure is going well. Stopping for lunch. We're about three hours away from the campground, so that's not bad. But we're starving. We made simple sandwiches. We're gonna share a banana and have some peanut butter bites. We are trying to eat pretty healthy on this trip and keeping things simple as well. When we have the opportunity to cook, we will, so we will be cooking tonight. For now, that's really about it. It is not that exciting in the east. I think as we move more west, things will really get interesting. But for now, we're just gonna enjoy our lunch and then hit the road. Do I? When you cut a banana in half, how do I attack this? Oh. I push it out, I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> no? Ah. Oh. She's done this before. Some say she's the uh, banana master. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's her trail name. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awful? That's my hidden talent. <laughs> she's a master of bananas. <laughs> Let's talk about where we're headed with this trip. Now, initially we were thinking about heading to Utah and going to a location that is known as the Valley of the Gods. We are definitely going there, but I think we need to make a stop first in New Mexico. We need to head to the New Mexico Badlands. Oh. Yeah. 
What we have in mind is going to be epic. I'm not even going to say anything else about it, but I promise you, most of you have never seen anything like this. So it's going to be very cool. All in all, it's been a good day, been very quiet. Uh, there's just not much to film really. We'll be arriving at the campsite at five o'clock. Let's wrap this up, Susie. Coffee time. Coffee time. Yeah, bye. Woohoo! Our camp spot for tonight. We got in about seven hours of driving time and we used Hip Camp to find this camping spot. This place is very close to the interstate and that works well for our travels because we are using the interstate so we can make the fastest progress so we have more time to explore. This place turns out to be one mile from the interstate. It's very quiet, it's very cheap. They allow RVs to park here, they have sites for tent camping or you can car camp. Overall, I think it's a win. We will see how our night goes, but it's really quiet, chilly, a little breezy. I think it's gonna work out. So this is our spot here. We can have a fire if we want to, probably won't. It's, it's pretty breezy tonight. First things first, we are going to get the truck ready and then get the coffee going. I have the bedding all set up for tonight. My side, Susie's side. We have our shelf system up here and we have two shelves. Right now it's doubled up over here, but we can move another one towards the bottom if we need the space. Sleeping pad, sleeping pad, blankets. We each have a down blanket and so on and so forth. We have an electric blanket on top just in case we need it. All in all though, tonight it's not supposed to be very cold. I think it's supposed to be around like 45 degrees, something like that. We have max tracks and other gear mounted on the sides, along with our backpacking gear down here at the bottom. We also added a pad at the back of our tailgate because our truck bed is rhino lined and it's very hard on your knees. So this removable pad helps a lot with sitting or if you have to kneel, it makes it much more comfortable. I'm going with Trader Joe's coffee. I have no idea what Luke is having. <laughs> Even though it's getting late into the evening, I still needed my cup of coffee. So it is what it is. I'm chugging some coffee right now. What Luke and I are doing for this trip is we have a quick coffee set. That's where we can access a small stove, our pot, and we can have instant coffee. We also have our press with us, so we will be making coffee like that in the mornings, filling up our travel mugs. But there's times when you stop and you need something fast. You don't have time to use the French press. The deployment of our overland system is very quick. We basically pulled in, we got the back of the truck ready. That took about five minutes. We made coffee, that took a couple of minutes. And we are pretty much ready for the night. With our bedding back there, once we have it set up like we do now, we don't have to do this again. We can leave it set up as we travel. Cheers, babe. Cheers. Dinner tonight, everyone, is going to be awesome. We are having beef lo mein. 
homemade right here in the campground. Susie's grabbing the ingredients. I have the stove set up and the sun is about to go down. Susie, that looks awesome. It does, it smells really good too. It's funny folks, Susie and I, we were just talking about the exhaust system here on the truck. And anytime that I mention exhaust systems or anything like that, I think back to high school. I had a buddy, his very first car, and just about everybody's first car in high school was a piece of shit. A friend of mine, he had a Volkswagen Beetle from like the 70s that was so rusted out. Like when you were in it, your feet can touch pavement. There is no floorboard at all. That was actually kind of fun to ride around in. <laughs> you never knew what was gonna happen. But uh, my buddy, he had a Buick Regal, which was like a grandma's car. And so, uh, you know, if you didn't have a really nice ride or a good sound system, the next thing that you can do was make it loud. So he straight piped that from the engine, cut the muffler off. <laughs> it was a V6. It sounded so awful, but it was so loud. You could hear that thing from like two miles away. You could hear him coming. Like, I remember one time I passed him like going over this hill. And I was like, what is that noise? And then when he passed me, I knew what it was. So funny. Oh gosh. I think when we were in high school, <laughs> it was all about you wanted a loud car yeah. or a loud truck and you wanted like the biggest sound system. Sure. Like you would put a speaker in your entire trunk. Yeah. That's what you wanted. A you, big subwoofer. Yeah. Rattle your car to pieces. Yeah. That's so funny <laughs> because your boyfriend in high school, before I stole her, <laughs> he had the crappiest sound system in his car. Do you remember that thing? I do remember. Every time like you'd, he'd stop at a stoplight, it would kill the battery. And I used to hang out with him all the time. It was the most embarrassing thing. Cause like sometimes he couldn't get the dang thing started. It was awful. I think everybody had the worst sound system. <laughs> Sounded so terrible. I mean, do people do that anymore? I feel like everybody just wants to plug in their phone and their phone plays. Yeah through their car speakers. Do you remember my car? <laughs> yeah, the uh, Corsica, yeah. white Corsica. Also known as a <laughs> piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I snuck her out of school. Did you get in the trunk? I think to leave I did get in the yeah. trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I snuck a lot of people out in the trunk. Anyway, so uh, we went to an overlook. Remember I had to take you somewhere and that car was like vroom, vroom, and you, you asked me, I remember, like if I was going to be able to get you back to school. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a hunk of crap. But you would give your keys to other girls because I guess maybe she was your girlfriend at the time, but she had the keys to your car. Okay. And like we took your car to Wendy's and got Frosties. Oh really? Because you would just give her your keys. Oh, I don't even remember that. Amber? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's funny. Oh well. oh well, okay, so I was in your car before you even knew it. Yeah, probably. oh, I guess, yeah, probably so. Yeah. Okay, you. can you dump all <laughs> that in here? <laughs> oh God, that's funny. It's all coming out, everyone. It's all coming yeah. out. She got with me because of my sweet ride. The Corsica. Yeah, it ran like crap, it had blown speakers. It didn't even sound good. Hell, it, <laughs> it barely ran. <laughs> Uh, those were the good old days. Oh, those are good times. We threw the meat and the egg rolls into the noodle pot and we're just gonna let everything warm up, mesh together. It'll be time to eat in no time. It will. So, Susie, there are two things that I know for certain. First off, this smells great. I'm starving. Is that two things? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's three. <laughs> eh, whatever. And uh, the next one is that it's getting cold. It is getting cold. Yeah. Or cool. Not really. Cold, it's chilly. It's chilly. It's chilly. Yeah. All right, let's eat. Then we can get into the warm truck. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The steak is good. Mm-hmm. 
That is freaking awesome, Susie. It tastes great. Mm. Susie may not remember this, but with our <laughs> last road trip, we had lo mein the very first night. I remember. Are you sure? I planned this. <laughs> and she actually <laughs> told me that <laughs> a minute ago. So We are going to eat dinner because it's getting dark quick. Bye. <laughs> Bye for now. Yum. Yum. Well, everyone, it has been a good evening. Susie and I hopped in the truck. We've just been taking it easy. Uh, we got in. We fired up the electric blanket. Super nice just to like get warm and comfy. I think it's bedtime. I'm tired. I have a full day of driving tomorrow She does and I mean that you just sit there and you just drive you point the vehicle. I mean like I've got to navigate navigate <laughs> And film You're right, so you should rest and uh... I'll take a massage if you don't mind <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody good night. We're done. We're getting goofy. Mm -hmm. Good night. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Somebody wrote mute on here, so you know which button to shut this thing off with. Oh, good, because they're annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. We are about to go through Memphis, Tennessee, and then we will be out of Tennessee shortly and heading into a new state. Today is Saturday, so it is a full drive day. Most of the campgrounds are packed up as far as state parks, so I was unable to plan ahead and find something. Tonight, we will either be taking a Walmart or a rest area. I will check with some other apps to see if there are any other camping opportunities, sort of what we found last night. But we will see. We are thinking it is more a rest area night. I like to think I'm kind of tough. Sometimes I feel invincible. I feel like I got the bad stuff. I feel like I'm in control. All right, everyone, we have made it to Oklahoma. We're at a rest area and it is coffee time. It is beautiful here, but quite windy, actually. I think the temperature is around 73 degrees, which isn't bad, but the winds, man, they're rocking maybe 25 miles an hour. Does it feel good? Oh yeah. Since it's so windy, we're firing up the stove in the truck. I tell you what, there really hasn't been much to film today, but it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great day. Now, coming up tomorrow, you're going to see some really cool stuff. Kitty, what do you think about some instant coffee from... from... <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, hmm. I think South Korea, I think. Give me a double. All right. I'll make it strong. Tell you what the weather here is perfect if we did this trip any later i bet it would be raging hot what do you think couldn't do it <laughs> today is saturday and i thought the traffic might be hectic and busy but it's been the opposite of that it's been a peaceful drive all day long we are going to have to do a little bit of planning as we drive to figure out where we will stop for the night Let's rock and roll, baby. Let's go.
By the way, everyone, we are keeping track of broken down vehicles on the side of the road for this trip so we can give you all some information. What is the most common vehicle brand broken down on the side of the road? Now, so far, there is a winner. Not going to say what it is, but there's a pattern. <laughs> Stay tuned to the end of this series to find out what is the most common broken down vehicle. Last time, it was Jeep. Jeep won last time. Yeah, there was tons of broken down Jeeps, especially the Gladiator. Gladiator truck, that was the most broken down vehicle last time, last year. So uh, we will see, we will see. everyone it is update time we are outside of Oklahoma City in fact we're about to punch through and then we are going to call it a night we are going to find a rest area and stop for the night Susie and I are both getting tired it has been a good day really can't complain about anything other than Bob here right in our faces check this out I'm having a hard time navigating which is some say the hardest job I don't know about our captain here. <laughs> How are you, Susie? Blind. Oh my god. <laughs> All I can see is spots right now. <laughs> How dare you, Bob? How dare you? Susie, may I interest you in some biscuits and gravy? <laughs> well, folks, our evening is pretty much wrapping up. We are going to have dinner out of a bag, call it a night. We are in a gas station parking lot, and this is just about as good as we could do. We are out in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around except for this gas station, so hey, it is what it is. It is, we made great time today. We're gonna eat, sleep a little bit, and hit the road because we have places to go. Hmm. Hmm. I love biscuits and gravy. And I'm the type of guy who really likes the gravy runny. So, um, I really made this to perfection. <laughs> you like it runny too, don't you? <laughs> you like really warm, watery gravy, right? It's very runny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay though, I don't mind it. I may have put just a little bit too much water in it, but eh, whatever. Now, we were hoping to find a better spot to stop tonight, but that didn't happen. We checked just about every app out there. There's no sites to camp at, there's nothing. There is a KOA campground not too far from here, but it was booked solid. Mm -hmm. That is the one thing that we've noticed with this trip, is like everybody is out. Everybody's traveling. Every campground is 100% full. I think with a lot of people, they are sick and tired of the COVID lockdowns and everyone is ready to get out and they are. With this trip, we're still being COVID conscious. We're staying away from people. We are self-sufficient in our vehicle. We have everything here that we need, including a toilet, a bathroom. At some point in time, we'll stop and stock up on food. Even though we are traveling, we are not gonna get hotels or anything like that. We are doing camping and we have a good system and we shared that a little bit in our first road trip about how we take a shower while on the road. I like your friends. They are my friends. <laughs> how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Did you sleep good? I did, I slept great. Inside of our palace. So again, we're inside Oklahoma, outside of Oklahoma City. We are making our way to New Mexico today. We can do it, Susie. We can do it. Yeah. Coffee's been made, we have breakfast, and that means that we are ready to hit the road. Susie, let's do this. Let's do it. Turn left onto US Route 66. In a quarter 
quarter mile, merge onto I-40 West. Well, everyone, it is update time. This is day three. We are outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. We are making awesome progress. It is nice and warm, but yet there's a beautiful breeze. It feels amazing. Susie's back there making lunch. It is sandwich time. Today, everything has been going very well. We're making excellent mileage. We have about another four or five hours of driving, then we'll be where we are going to go for the night. And in truth, the adventure really begins once we get there. There are so many cool things that we are going to do, so many things that we're going to share. I can't wait. So back here in the truck, we have our bathroom and our kitchen. Don't worry completely sanitary, but sometimes you do have to stand in the bathroom to use the kitchen. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes you have to sit on the toilet to make a sandwich. <laughs> Today we are having ham, salami, and provolone sandwiches with some fruit and half of a peanut butter bar on the side. Pretty simple, but it hits the spot. I am so thankful for that breeze because it is hot it already. Is hot. It's like a 84, something like that. But the breeze really makes it comfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm. And of course I get mustard mm. all over. It's what I do. I think the ads playing at the pumps at Love's is so loud, that's what I keep hearing. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what is she doing? Or are he doing? One of the most interesting things about our road trip is people watching. You stop at a rest area, a gas station, you watch people. Everyone's doing weird stuff. I love how we're all out here doing what we want yeah. to do. Freedom, you know? That's it. And I admire all these people that are out in these huge RVs, <clears throat> driving on the roads. It's crazy. You have to be fearless to do that, I think. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we see big RVs, so incredibly long, pulling vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Everybody is seeking adventure. Mm -hmm. 2021 is the year of adventure. Everybody's had enough. They have to get out. Yeah, and adventure means something different mm -hmm. to everybody. Some people like to take their RV to the lake and park it, and that's their adventure. Mm -hmm. Some of us like to hike into the mountains, and that's our adventure. Right. We are running off to the desert, that's our adventure. That's it. It's interesting to see how the year is shaping up with COVID, because like so much of the country, well, you could say that some parts are in lockdown, but lockdown doesn't mean anything. Just in case you're not in the US, the United States was never locked down. You could mm -hmm. pretty much do anything you want to, Besides to get a haircut or go to a restaurant, silly things. But otherwise, you can do anything you want to. We were driving through Texas, 
and they were having a concert on the side of the road thousands of people mm -hmm. all together having a blast the country is open and it has been man it has been i think the interesting thing is that we talked to so many people in their countries are not that way mm -hmm. the united states is too big mm -hmm. It's just, it's too big to control. Mm -hmm. And we're humans, we're people, we wanna do stuff. But we're getting off topic, everyone. We're going to eat our lunch. We'll be back on the road here in a minute. Oh yeah. New Mexico, yes. We're here. Woohoo. <laughs> Wow, Susie, this is amazing. Wow, look at the view. Wow. They haven't seen it yet. Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen it good yet either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. This is one of the big destinations for this trip. My friends, welcome to the New Mexico Badlands. Have you ever seen anything like it? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> we are going to take you places which look just otherworldly. It looks like you're on a different planet. It's amazing. Yeah, we made it, Susie. Yes. <laughs> Good job, babe. Susie has been a trooper. She's amazing. I tell you what, let's go find a campsite. Yes.
What do you think of this place? It's so pretty. <laughs> it's awesome. Let's go ahead and show everyone our view. I don't think you can complain about this. As for the trip to New Mexico from North Carolina, we did this in three days. We left on a Friday. We have arrived on Sunday and now we have days and days to explore. We will be exploring and we will be moving to different states, exploring different locations and really taking our time before we start the journey back east. Oh man, that smells unreal. Tonight's dinner is steak sandwiches. We have shaved beef with peppers and onions and we're gonna eat them open-faced on buns with provolone cheese. Woo. It's really nice when you have the opportunity to cook while you're out on road trips. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes you have to make a sandwich or eat out of a bag. But I was really looking forward to getting to camp tonight and cooking. I was just thinking, Susie, you know, the viewers, they know me. They know that I'm a, a connoisseur of fine foods and fine coffee. Nothing but the best. Like Taster's Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, he was in charge of dinner. <laughs> yeah, right. that was delicious by the way. I, I really like biscuits and gravy with like watered down gravy. That's so good. It, it was good. You did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> so there's the truck. Here's our incredible view. Susie, that looks amazing. Mm, it smells so good. It does. Let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> now tomorrow we are going to do some serious hiking into an awesome, awesome place. There's very little about this place on YouTube. We cannot wait to share it with you all. We're tired. We're going to eat. And um, probably just go to bed, really. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, really, this BLM land was our stopping point for our third night. We still have a little bit of a drive to get to our backpacking destination, mm -hmm. but it's in this area. So this was the perfect pit stop for our third night. And it's great. It's not that far from the road. No. We're up here alone. It's beautiful. I'm so thankful that we get to experience this and be here. And this is just the beginning. It is. Yeah. Anytime that you can go on a road trip and get to where you're going without any problems, gosh, that is such a good feeling. I know. It's always like, thank you, thank you. I feel so <laughs> blessed to be able to get here yeah. with no issues. But for me, the trip started as soon as we left the house. Camping in Tennessee in the freezing weather. Yeah. I'm never going to forget that. Right. <laughs> Pulling over, sleeping at a gas station. I'm never gonna forget that, right. you know? So for me, it's as soon as we leave and start our road trips, I enjoy every minute of them. It's every single part is an adventure. Mm -hmm. And that's why folks, you have to get out. This is the year, 2021. It's all about adventure. You can get out, you can stay away from people at the same time, just like we are. Mm -hmm. You can do it, no excuses. All right, enough talk, let's eat, kitty. I'm so hungry. Yeah. This looks awesome. So here we go. Mmm. Freaking amazing. Is it good? Mmm. Perfect. Mm hmm. Mmm. I've been wanting good food all day long. Mm mm mm.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm up, Susie's up. Check out this place. Wow. <laughs> it is amazing. And this is where we slept, folks. Right here on the edge of this mountain. I just fired up the kettle. It's time to get some coffee going. And then Susie and I will figure out what we are going to do today. There are so many cool things that we can get into. There's so many remote places that we can head to. For this trip, we are testing out numerous products, including this new Jackery. This is the Explorer 1500. We have a Blue Yeti in the back there. That's the 2000. And so far with this trip, both units have given us some trouble. This one did not want to charge when it was cold. It would still export power though. The Blue Yeti will not charge on 12 volt at all for some reason. <laughs> so. Issues, man, issues. issues. With this trip, we are testing out gear as well. So we have those two items. I'm testing out this jacket from Mountain Hardware, and we have some other stuff. We did bring a luxury item. We brought a toaster here so we can have some toast this morning. Oh yes, I love toast. In my opinion, nothing is better than some butter, some jelly, or even butter and honey is really good. Susie, look at those mountains. Oh, they're really coming into view now. Wow. Okay. I hopped up without knocking my coffee over this time, so. That's a win. <laughs> I have a history of doing that, so. I don't want to talk about it, it's fine. Fine. Good morning, cheers. Susie, cheers, good morning. Cheers, good morning. What an incredible place to be. I mean, this is just unreal. Those snow-capped mountains are just amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's multiple layers. So you have this ridge right here, which is closest to us, and there's another range behind it. And then there's another one over here. Yeah, even the layers of colors in the canyon down there. Mm -hmm. It's like a piece of art. Looks like art to me. Like a beautiful painting. Mm -hmm. People who are not from the United States or who have never been here before can't quite grasp how large this country is and just how remote most of it is. You have a few population centers where like 80% of the population lives, like in the bigger cities. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, there's nothing. Yeah, I would say even being from the United States, if you haven't traveled a lot, it's hard to understand as well. This is the first time I've seen anything like this and I'm blown away. And the differences from here versus where we live. Mm -hmm. Where we live, there's so much green. We have trees everywhere. It's like this lush green color, pretty much all the time except in the middle of winter. But we still have so many trees and you get out here and there is no grass, it's dirt and even the sun is different mm -hmm. here than where we live. Well, try a piece of my toast. Oh, okay. Special recipe. Ooh, is that apple jelly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sourdough bread, butter, apple jelly? Mmm. That is freaking awesome. Good? Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow, that's awesome. I Welcome. heart toast. We're bringing a toaster. It is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. <laughs> Our plan is to finish up breakfast. I need to get ready, change clothes, get ready for some backpacking, and we will hit the road. We have about an hour and 10 minutes to drive to get to this secret location. Where we are headed, there's no signs for it. Mm -mm. You're not going to find directions to it. It is extremely remote. And it's a secret, so. Mm -hmm. Don't ask. Just enjoy the video and the scenery that we show. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>
You just instantly pissed off like three people. Some things have to be like <laughs> left untouched, mm -hmm. you know. It is time to get ready for some backpacking, folks. And for that, I need some sun protection. Also known as backpacking professional. <laughs> All right, Susie and I, for the most part, are packed up, ready to rock and roll. Let's shut up the truck. It is time to go. With this road, it is washboarded pretty badly. Your instinct is to slow down on it, but that's really not the best thing to do. Get your speed up and it's more manageable. We apologize for the wind noise. This is going to be a windy trip. There's just no way around it. <laughs> the winds are blowing about 30 miles an hour right now. Ah, oh, that is so much better, Susie. You think it's better down there? <laughs> it's a little bit sheltered. I'm not sure if you all heard me, but the winds are blowing about 30 miles an hour here. Check this out. This is just the beginning of where we are going. We want to welcome you all to the New Mexico Badlands. Where we are specifically, I'm not going to say. There is some information about this on the internet, but we are not going to add to it. This is one of those things where it's not spoiled. We have to protect it. I will say that we are on BLM land in New Mexico. And for us being from the East Coast, BLM land is amazing. You have the potential and the ability to go out, find solitude, find really cool places. This is petrified wood, everyone.
You know, everyone, I really don't have the right words to describe this. It is like being on a different planet, like an episode of Star Trek beaming down to this foreign world. We are so lucky that it's early spring. I mean, it's hot already and it's only about 70 degrees. Can't imagine doing this when it's 100 degrees. So we came out to get a head start on the backpacking season. Wow, folks, this is simply incredible. The place that we're at here, there is no trail. There's no signs to get you here. In fact, listening to Google Maps will get you killed. Maybe not really, but it will definitely get you lost. Google Maps cannot be trusted. Right now, it's around 70 degrees, but with the sunlight reflecting off of the sand stuff, it's hot. It is plum hot. Now, over here in the corner, it looks like there's some caves. We are going to try to get over there and see if we can't get in them. We need to check them out. This is just unbelievable. <laughs> and it's a little bit of a maze, like, which way do you go to get down safely? I think you're on the right path, Susie. Over here is where Susie and I are headed. Susie, what looked like a cave is nothing more than volcanic rock. It's a layer. How about that? You're looking at a previous eruption. That's insane. Amazing. Right here you go, everyone. This is an old bone. That very well could be an old dinosaur bone. There are fossils all over this place. In fact, from what I understand, this used to be an ancient swamp that had alligators and not a triceratops, but a ten pointed, I guess you would call that a, a penta. 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 And it was only found in New Mexico, right here. Some call these badlands fossil lands because of so many dinosaur fossils that have been found. Either way, it is such a unique place. Because there's still expeditions going on here, they're still digging up dinosaur bones. They request that you do not disturb the landscape in any sort of way. We're hoping to find a little bit of 
cover from the wind, maybe right over here. Maybe right up against this. I'm not sure if that's, oh my gosh, it is. I mean, it's not perfect, but nothing's perfect. It's like five miles an hour instead of 35. It is lunchtime, everyone. <laughs> wow. This is incredible. I mean, look at this stuff. As we are exploring, we are finding some really cool rocks, petrified wood, and things like that. And it's always tempting to just take a piece, take a piece back home with you. Everything you find in nature, you should just leave it. It's respectful, it's the right thing to do, and many people believe that if you do take something, you could get cursed. This isn't your land. These aren't your artifacts. These belong to everybody, so. Let them stay. Let them stay. I had a quick little taste bite of this. It tastes like pizza to me for some reason. I love pizza. <laughs> you tell me. It smells like pizza. Let's see. It's like pizza, pizza sauce. Yeah. What do you think? Mm. It's pizza-like. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Pizza pulled pork. <laughs> It is amazing just like this place. Well, we'll finish this up. Keep on hiking. Lunch was awesome. Now we are back hiking around here. We saw, I believe it's called a hoodoo, sticking up. So we are hiking over here to check it out. It looks to be pretty impressive. There is a ton of petrified wood. Wow, big chunks. It's an entire tree. So check this out, everyone. This really is more of a petrified forest right here. There's tons and tons of wood. In fact, this here is all one big tree. Wow. Something just caught our eye, everyone. We're making our way over to it right now. It looks like some sort of wall or maybe part of an old structure. So we've stumbled upon something else here. I have no idea what this once was though. Kitty, I have no idea how anyone can hike this any later into the season. I don't either, it's hot. It is really, really hot. The air temperature is around 70 something degrees, but down towards the sand, it's gotta be close to 100. Yeah, it's so hot. You can feel it yeah. radiating up. Luckily, got my sun hat, sunblock. We are good to go. Susie and I have been hiking through the desert here for a while now, but I think we're getting pretty close to the cool stuff again. Should be over this hill. I think I have found a cattle trail. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> We've made our way back to the weird rock formations, the hoodoos and <laughs> whatever else you call it, I have no idea, but there are tons of them. Wow. There is so much hiking that we could do here. And that's pretty much what we are going to do 
we're going to hike for a few more hours and then we'll head off into the desert somewhere and that's where we will pitch our tent. This area does have a significant meaning to the Indians. So it doesn't seem right to stay here. Susie and I want to be respectful. Come through, admire, then head off. You can get lost in this. I say let's go around it instead of through it. What do you think? Yeah. You might make your way down into a hole that you can't get out of. Wow. This place is so expansive. We've come across even more strange rock stuff. It is so wild. Check out this rock, everyone. <laughs> Look at all this crazy rock stuff. Wow, that is insane. All of these formations, they're just incredible. <laughs> I hit a dead end. <laughs> it's awesome. It's really, really cool. Yeah, you did. I found some shade too. Check me out. Woo! Shade. Got some shade. There is not much of this. It's getting to be late afternoon, so for now we're gonna start heading out away from these rock formations. There are tons here. I'm not sure it's possible to explore every single one of them, and we don't wanna camp right in this area with them. They are kind of sacred and they have a special meaning. So we are going to start heading out, see what we can find as far as a camping spot. All right, everyone, update time. We are headed for this rise over here. Hopefully behind that is a dip and that is where we are going to camp. Cross your fingers. It is super, super windy. We're super exposed. We have found absolutely nothing that is sheltered. So what goes up must go down. So <laughs> let's see. Okay, so it looks like there is a pretty good dip over here down here in this depression right there that's where I'm thinking it is the lowest point around here for miles this is home how windy is it it's not as bad okay that's Mighty good windy. this over here is Navajo farmland this is BLM what do you think oh yeah yeah it's at least 10 miles an hour less yeah that makes a substantial difference. So, yeah. Now this is somewhat of a hole here. It's a depression. If there was even a chance of rain, I would not select this spot, but it's dry, there's not a chance of rain, and everything else is just simply too exposed. So it's this or 
<laughs> Nothing else. Nothing. I think we'll make it work. I think so too. Let's do it. Whew. I tell you what, folks. It is windy and it is hot. Is it windy? No. <laughs> The tent is all set up for the night and all of our stuff is out. I'm going to change into my larger sun hat. This hat makes it a little bit difficult when you are hiking because the way the back is, it hits the back of my backpack. So I opted not to use it. But after being in the sun all day, I think I'm gonna switch to this and it is coffee time now. Coffee time. I'm tired, need coffee. Need coffee. Yes. That's about as good as we can do everyone. It's been a long day. It's been a long day, but it's been a really good day. It's been a lot of fun. All right. We are crammed inside of this tent, and I do mean crammed. We had to go pretty ultra light for this trip because first off, the distance was high. I believe we've done about 12 miles today. We are out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's hot. The sand is hard to trek through. We're exhausted, so we're just gonna chill in here, hide from the sun. Yeah, the sun is brutal and it's going to be up for another two hours or so. I mean, it's, it's a funny combination. Like it's hot in the sun, super windy. I mean, so it's like almost just drying you out completely by just standing there. Definitely. Yeah, so like it feels good, but it's doing you harm. <laughs> you can't win. Overall, it's been a crazy day. Yeah. Full of adventure. I'm having a blast times when I've been a little miserable, but hey, it's all part of it. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to do something and the wind gets your hat and jerks it <laughs> off. And so yeah, it's been a blast. It truly has been a blast. Yeah. And this is only the first part. This is a big loop that Susan and I came up with that hits two big areas. So you saw the first area with all those hoodoos and whatever you call them. That's so cool, by the way. Anyways, we continued hiking. We are going to reach the second big part tomorrow. I can't wait. Obviously, we're a little bit crazy to attempt to backpack in the Badlands <laughs> of New Mexico, but um, we're gonna see it through. Yeah. And hopefully, I mean, maybe there's a chance that the wind won't be any worse than it is right now. Hopefully, we'll have a comfortable night. Yeah. You know, we'll see. When you're inside of the tent, the wind's not bad. Like, this mm -hmm. is a really well-designed shelter. The wind just kind of goes right off the back over the front. It's not bad at all. It's not obnoxious. You don't hear flapping or anything. Yeah, so we might be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Making the coffee was an, a, an exercise of patience. <sighs> it's so windy. Like we had to do it right here in the sand, right in front of the door. And there is a, a line of where it's not windy and where it's windy. And unfortunately, where it's not windy is really close to the tent. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, <laughs> we're covered in sand. All of our gear is covered yeah. in sand. It's been an adventure, but <laughs> cheers to being crazy. Cheers, folks. Cheers. Yeah. This has been so awesome. It has. I've wanted to come out to the desert for so long. This is one of those trips where, like, one day can make a huge difference. One day can make the difference between it being possible and not possible. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the temperature, it got higher than what they forecasted. They said 70. It's got to be at least 80. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, tomorrow it's supposed to be even colder, but it's supposed to be even windier. I mean, the day before we showed up, it was in the 90s. This is one of those places that you have to see. You have to experience. Just so unique. It is. You know, so. Yeah. New Mexico, thank you very much for having us. We do appreciate it. BLM land is amazing. I wish we had something like this in the east. Yeah, we don't have the exact same thing. Mm -mm. That's okay, though. Yeah. You know, I think... For us, we like to sample it all, and so we've done like coastal trips and very mountainous trips, mm -hmm. and where we live is beautiful, and there's just tons of forest and things like that, and now we're tackling the desert, so. Yeah. What's next, yeah. Susie? What would be next? Ocean. Let's rent a boat and sleep out in the middle of the ocean. That might be next. <laughs> that sounds stupid when I say it out loud, but in my man brain, I'm like, Hell yeah. Ocean camping. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right in a hurricane. <laughs> Maybe not. I sort of like my feet to be on land. She does so. not like water. Mm -mm. 
Should I tell them the story? You can tell them at dinner. I want to rest now. So. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Thanks for bringing me. Love you. Love you, babe. I'm resting. I love you all. We'll be back. She loves you too. She won't say it, but she does. Mm. I'm goofy. <laughs> You're uh, tired. I'm tired. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. sun is going down folks and it is time for dinner it's still windy don't get me wrong but at least in this hole it's dying down some thank it, god yes thank goodness <laughs> thank god i actually thought that the winds were maybe quiet for the night but it just picked back up just a little bit but um it's not bad it's not bad at all it was really rocking there for a little bit i'd say maybe 45 miles an hour i mean it was roaring yeah there's no shelter so even if you're out trying to walk around full on wind full on sun <laughs> i rested for a while i did too listen to music yeah there is no cell phone service in this one particular spot but if you if you move like five feet over there you get just enough to do whatever you want to it's I really know. funny it's weird it's <laughs> funny but it's fine to be unplugged anyway Enough about that. Tonight's dinner is spaghetti. Yes. It's Mountain House. Stuff is good. Kitty gets the first bite. <sighs> it's ah, been smells a... good. Ooh, Damn. it does smell good. It smells really good. All right, well, I'm gonna eat. Okay. Mm. Is it good? Mm-hmm. All right. All of our food today has been really good. That's true. That pulled pork and rice thing from Real Torment, that was awesome. When you're out in the desert, you have all of these things working against you. Wind, especially in the spring. In the spring, it's very windy in the desert. Sun, it's so dry, so every bit of moisture is just being pulled from you. Sand. Sand is a constant battle. Mm -hmm. I mean, sand inside of your tent, that's a problem. It goes inside of your sleeping bag, that's a problem. You're laying on sand, sand in your shoes, sand on your phone, sand on your camera. Yeah, sand is everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. There's also a lack of perspective maybe in the desert mm -hmm. because I would see a really cool rock and I would say, hey, we need to go check this out, run off to it. And then I just didn't realize the amount of hiking that we ended up having to do because mm -hmm. we would run so far off because you see something and you don't realize that it's maybe farther than it looks. Since there's no trees, you have no idea how to judge mm -hmm. distance because you have nothing to compare it to. Usually you'd be like, okay, I can compare it to that tree and get an idea of how far you're about to hike. Yeah. <laughs> Here you can't do that. This has been so awesome because we've been off trail the entire time. And that is really the case come tomorrow. We will be just heading through a field, <laughs> making our way to this place. And ultimately we will connect with a road, hike it for maybe a mile, make it back to the truck. Mm-hmm. Awesome adventure. So amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So back to Susie not liking water, right? I feel like you've shared the story before. I have, but I'll share it again because it's so good. Actually, it's terrible. But we went to Hawaii. It was like our honeymoon, but like 15 years later, <laughs> something like that. And we decided to take like this cruise. So we get on the boat and it's us. We're a couple. It's other couples. Every woman is seasick. All the guys are fine. So, like, they don't want to drink. They're all just kind of, like, huddled together, not feeling great. And us guys were just drinking and having a fun time. We were talking about heading to the bar after we got back to land. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did you eat the dinner? Because I 
think I remember you saying, well, I'm not going to eat. Yeah, maybe I didn't. Eat. But then I was like, oh my gosh, we paid for this. You should eat. I don't think but I did. I don't remember many people eating at all. I remember just drinking. Yeah. Kitty, let's eat. It's getting dark. Okay. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs> Found a light. Found a battery. Had dinner. Just been chilling inside of the tent. And it is time to call it a night. I'm tired. I'm tired, too. Yeah. Pretty much time to get ready. That's a, Just got to brush up and all that good stuff. Today has been epic, and now it's time to turn in, get some sleep, so we can pick up first thing in the morning. We need to get started earlier so that we can beat the heat. If we start first thing in the morning, early, we can get the rest of the hiking done with. Tomorrow is not going to be a long hiking day like today was. Yeah, maybe like five, six miles, something like that. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait to show you all. <laughs> the hike itself is pretty cool because, I mean, just like middle of freaking nowhere. I mean, all of this is just in the middle of nowhere. It really is. And the landscapes, I mean, you guys saw us. We're walking through sand, desert, and then you come across these rock formations. And then you leave that and there's like red rock. There's black rock. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. It is. When we say it's remote, it's pretty remote. It is remote. Yeah, I think uh, it's about 20 miles from a paved road. I mean, that's that's a pretty good distance. And uh, nothing is labeled out here. Mm -mm. So you better know where you're going and make sure to pay attention to the weather because if any moisture falls, you're not traveling on these roads. You know, I'm wrong. There is one sign when you turn on to like one of these roads. It says, do not drive if there's any, any is capitalized, water on these roads that's right there is that one sign <laughs> that's funny anyways we're done i'm tired yeah <laughs> good night everybody good night i've got to get outside of the tent one last time in the wind i'm not looking forward to it but good night and i will see you guys in the morning good night folks good morning susie mm, good morning Good morning, everybody. Last night was a wild ride. It got calm, and then it rock and rolled. Super windy. Then it stopped. And it seems to be just perfectly still right now. It does. Super calm. I hope it is. I really do. Yeah. It'd be nice to be able to hike <laughs> without it just roaring today. A little chilly this morning. Not bad though. No. But we're about to get up. It's about time to get started. Mm -hmm. We've got some hiking to do. Mm -hmm. Get this done before it gets hot. Mm -hmm. A few minutes ago, the coyotes were howling. Did you hear them? I don't think I did. I must have still been snoozing. <laughs> yeah, it's really far off, but yeah, they were howling. New Mexico coyotes. Um, are they different than North Carolina ones? I don't know. All right, everybody, let's get up. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. It is. Big hat time and coffee time. Big hats today. We don't want any more sun. I think we've done really well. I do too. Not getting sunburned or anything. But I'm going to make my big sun hat work today since we have more hiking to do. And it definitely offers more coverage for Yes, me. it does. You really have to have these big sun hats when you're out here. So Last night, I slept great. Even though with the winds coming and going... I slept great too. It was almost like the wind would rock me to sleep and then it would calm down. I slept great. It's really, really quiet out here. The only thing I know that I heard is maybe the gas things yeah. working. I guess that's what it is. There's a hear... lot of natural gas pumps or something. Because you can hear like this. Wop, 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 wop. It's constant. Yeah. It has to be one of those gas it things. It has to be that. But other than that, I didn't hear anything else. It was a peaceful night. I slept great. Yeah. It was We're, really nice. We are up early. 
We have breakfast, coffee, the sun is up. Life is good. There's a slight breeze, it feels amazing. And you guys can actually hear us for once. The editing on this video is going to be killer. <laughs> to try to get like usable audio. Tacos. Maybe the hiking today won't be windy mm -hmm. and we will finish our trip in like calm weather. That's right. Now our hiking today is taking us over here and that is going to take us to our next location. And in truth, like our hike has been kind of like this. We're working our way back around sort of. So yeah, we'll be back at the truck in no time. It's gonna be awesome. It's a great way to finish the day, especially in this amazing place. It is absolutely amazing. It is. All right, well, let's save battery. We'll drink, eat. eat. All right. And we'll get going, everyone. We'll get to hiking. What are we eating this morning? We are having chocolate muesli from Realtor Map. Mm. I say any time you can wake up and have chocolate. Life is good. It's good. Yeah, that's like a chocolate oatmeal cereal thing. And it's great. Unfortunately, everyone, the wind is back. It just picked up. It feels good though. The warm sun, the cool breeze, it's not bad. As you all can see, there are no trails. This is pick your own adventure. You can go any way you want to, and that's what we are doing. You guys have no idea what we're looking at, but we just crested the top of this little hill and the landscape has vastly changed. It's unreal. Come on, let's look. This is crazy. Wow. <laughs> so crazy. I have no idea what to call this. It is so smooth and rounded. I wonder what it feels like to walk on it. Wow. <laughs> Folks, what is this? How bizarre. It's so weird. How would you describe walking on that? It's like baked mud, like crunchy but soft. Yeah. Looks like we need to go over here to go around this. What do you think? Yeah. Definitely ain't going that way. Wow. What forms this?
right, folks, we are now hiking back through the sand, making our way back to the truck. We have a couple miles to go. We'll have to hike on this for a while. Then we will come out on a road and have to hike that. And that's it. The adventure is done. Susie and I are walking this long road to nowhere. Up this road a few miles, we will find our truck, Drifter. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We are still in New Mexico and we will be making our way to Utah today. After we finished hiking in the Badlands, we drove about an hour and a half to a free campsite on some wildlife management land. It's very windy here, but it was a good resting stop. We were able to relax, catch up on some work, and we did get showers in, but they were slightly cold and windy but we made it work. So today we'll be heading to Utah and we are a couple hours away. We are outside of Farmington, New Mexico, which we happen to like quite a bit. Very nice people. The Walmart was great. We did a restock there. Today we push on to Valley of the Gods and I cannot wait. From here, I believe it's about two hours. Susie is right about this place being windy. At one point in time last night, it was rocking maybe 50 miles an hour. It was insane. <laughs> I think it rocked me to sleep, actually. We're making breakfast, making coffee, hiding from the wind. Right here, this is a wind block. Right here. Susie, are you in the wind? Uh, slightly. Not bad. Okay, that's good. Not bad. But it's, uh, it's cold. It's a cold day. Cold morning. Kitty, why did they do this? I don't know, it's washboarded pavement. It is so awful. It's like a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. It is up time, up time. It is update time, everyone. We just crossed into Arizona just for a little bit, then we'll head into Utah. I am so glad to be out of New Mexico for one simple fact. The roads suck. The roads. <laughs> they are so bad. Out of every state that we've gone through, New Mexico has the worst roads. But um, crossed into Arizona, everything's good. We are. 60 miles away from Valley of the Gods and it is incredibly beautiful out here. Susie, this is awesome. It is awesome. The landscape has changed and it's beautiful. We have mountains with snow on them. We have a lot of red rocks out this direction and today it feels great to be on the road and moving again. Hopefully where we're going isn't as windy. I'm a little bit tired of
it's time for an update everyone. We are 7.7 .7 miles away from Valley of the Gods Road. This is a 17 mile long road that goes through some beautiful desert. We are going to cruise through, find a place to camp. Oh yeah. It is so beautiful out here and so different from like New Mexico. It is, it's really different. Everything's red, it's just crazy. Temperature wise, 64 degrees, time almost 1 p.m. And life is good. Susie, welcome to Valley of the Gods. We made it. Woo, check that out. That is our view from the back of the truck. Wow. We do have peace, we have quiet, we have some solitude in an incredible place. Susie, this is just awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> What's for lunch, Susie? We are going to have barbecue sandwiches. Oh, yes. Yum. Gosh, that sounds so good. Feels great in here. There's yeah. no wind. And that view, I mean. It is unreal. I'm sorry, everybody, but wow. <laughs> I mean, to have to be here and have to eat lunch with a view like this. It is amazing. Wow. It really is. I mean, you have two people here from North Carolina. We're accustomed to like a sea of green, nothing but forest, seeing very little of the sky to this. It's unreal. To experience it like this is so different and there's not enough words. I've never seen things like this in my entire life. No. We're so lucky to have this BLM land. I know there's some controversy there. I think it was originally BLM, but then it was made part of the Bears Ear Monument or something or other, and then it was back to BLM. There's a, a big controversy. I see both sides, mm -hmm. but with it being BLM, you can come out here, you can explore it. It belongs to you, me, you. I hope that there is enough of us out there that will respect the land and keep it in good condition for many people to enjoy. And I think that's where a lot of the controversy comes from is that there are people that go out there and trash our lands. All right, so what we have here, barbecue, coleslaw, a ton of it, let's eat. We are from the South. We like our barbecue. Yes, we do. We like coleslaw. <laughs> How many miles have we driven so far? Oh, we've went over, I think, 1,800 now. Wow. And we are not even done, folks. Mm -mm. 
We'll talk a little bit later about our plans. Let's eat. <laughs> I, I have nothing else to say to you all right now. <laughs> Well, folks, Susie and I, we just finished up lunch. Now it's time for a hike. We would love to find some petroglyphs or something like that. That would be so cool. Now, there is a misconception about this area. I've seen in some YouTube videos, people talking about how you're not supposed to hike here. That's inaccurate. We've checked with multiple sources. You can, in fact, hike here. You can also disperse camp. A lot of people confuse the regulations for this area with Monument Valley, which is Navajo land. Over there, you're supposed to have a guide with you if you head off into the backcountry. That's not the case here. All of this is BLM. Our hiking is going good. We're making our way up here. Super windy. We're following washes as much as possible. And of course, making sure not to step on anything that's fragile, growing and whatnot. This landscape is just simply amazing. Right up there is the notch. I'm not sure if we can actually make it up there easily or not. We will go see. To give you all an idea of just how big this rock is, check this out. Look at this. I found a bone. Ooh. The Indians could have used this as a shelter. I mean, it makes for an awesome wind block. Water break, Susie. Water break. Ladies first. There are so many cool things to see here. And Susie and I, we're not filming them all. It's one of those things where you have to come out here yourself. You have to see and feel the magic of the place. I've seen many pictures of this place and they do not do it justice. It's a place you have to come see in person. I think that is how it goes for a lot of things. They are so much better in real life, in person, getting to feel them just as much as see them. There are so many cool rocks, so many places to look. Ah, pack rat nest. See the bones? We striked out on petroglyphs and whatnot. We've read online that they are all over the place out here, but that's the thing, the magic. You have to find them yourself. Susie, we have done an awesome job of exploring this area. That was a great little hike. It was. We could not go up and over, so we came all the way to the end, and we've checked all the big rocks because we were hoping to see some petroglyphs.
that was a long hike again because there's no trees you really can't gauge distance very well what did we hike like seven miles in total pretty much it was six point something <laughs> that was awesome i love exploring like that some of the rocks that are out there i mean they are incredible mm -hmm. it'd be like gigantic 30 foot tall rocks around stuck in the ground like leaning on each other one two three like it's just super super neat cheers my friends cheers <laughs> double-sided pour double-sided pour Susie dinner smells great it does smell good what are we having sweet and sour chicken oh yeah We got that done. Yes. In the nick of time. The sun is down. No wind. Everybody, the wind has ceased. For now, I've yeah. been fooled before on this trip. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I am thankful that it is not windy because it gets irritating after a while. Everything I have brought with me is covered in sand. I woke up the other morning, I'm pretty sure I had sand in my mouth. Last night when we were having dinner, I took a bite into my sand sandwich or whatever it was. You ate some sand? I did. This place is so special, but it's not a secret gem. When you hear about the Valley of the Gods, or if you start reading about it, doing research about it, it is made to be out a secret gem. No one hardly goes there. Everyone's at Monument Valley. That's not true. I don't true. think that's the case. Maybe Monument Valley isn't even open right now. I don't know, but this is a great alternative and you get the same types of views. So I don't think it's a secret gym, but it is large enough to where there's plenty of campsites. And if you can grab one, you don't hear other people. It's very quiet out here tonight. I'm not disappointed. No. I'm not disappointed at all. It's unrealistic, especially in these times, to not expect other people to be out. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's a good thing. It's good to see everybody getting outdoors. Yeah, you can get out. You don't have to see anybody. Do it like we're doing. Have we talked to anybody? No. No. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Check out that view. Beautiful. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. We got coffee going. The sun is coming up and it is going to be a beautiful day. How'd you sleep last night, Susie? I slept great. It's a beautiful morning here. Without a doubt, when you're overlanding, you have those overland hours. You have to wait for the sun to come up so you can warm up and start moving. With Valley of the Gods, this used to be Navajo land, and each one of these rock formations was like a spirit to them, a god to them. And each one had a different meaning. Some was strength, some was peace, and so on. And they are amazing. They really are. It's really cool just to be here, to be amongst these. And it's unreal how quiet it is, isn't it? It's so quiet. It is. I mean, there's people here, but it's not insanely busy. For now. For now. Susie and I, we're having some coffee, about to have some breakfast, and we will be on the road momentarily. While we're drinking coffee, let's go over some goof-ups that have taken place with this trip so far. On Susie's behalf, nothing big. She cut her finger with the knife the other night. That's not, I mean, everybody makes mistakes, right? My goof-up was quite impressive and it impacted myself, Susie, about 10 others in Walmart. <laughs> okay, so we're in Walmart in Farmington, New Mexico, and we have two two and a half gallon water jugs. And they have like little nozzles that like pop out so you can, you know. Anyway, so I grab one all delicate like, put it on the conveyor belt to check out. <laughs> the other one, I use every bit of my strength <laughs> to yank that thing out of the cart. The cap flies off somewhere. 
I throw water. <laughs> I, I think I got you wet. Yeah. I, I soaked my arm. I threw water all over the floor on the conveyor belt. The oh. guy had to stop doing what he was doing, like check it out. Had to go get a mop. It was impressive. Accidents happen. Yeah. What really impressed Susie was the way I just manhandled that right out of the... Just ripped it out. <laughs> and then what's funny is like, oh. you were able to get it back in there. And we were like, no, we'll still take it. We'll still take it. We didn't lose that much water, but there's water everywhere. Yeah, like it was only like this much out of that jug, but there was freaking water everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, that was my moment to shine right there. Susie and I are out here in the middle of nowhere. We've been hiking around for way too long. <laughs> yeah, it is getting hot, but it is awesome. We have found a number of petroglyphs that are just incredible. Susie, we found one. We did, we found one. I have to get up to it. And we also found a truck <laughs> that's been shot full of holes. What a day it has been, everybody. We're still out here cruising around. We stop ever so often, go run off, looking for petroglyphs and whatnot. Wow, what a place, what a place. There are just so many opportunities, so many cool things to check out and to explore. Have you been having a good time, Susie? It has been incredible. It is a really, really unique place. There's so much history here. I wish I understood more about it. I wish I knew more about it, but I definitely have the respect for this area and the land, and I'm so thankful that we're here. That's the word of the day, thankful. All right, well, we are going to cruise around a little bit more. I don't know if I will film too much more of this. So this is one of those things where you need to see it for yourself. We just finished driving through Valley of the Gods. We did the entire route, and now we are gonna head up to Mogi Dugway and check that out. With the Valley of the Gods, I cannot recommend that enough. That was truly awesome, truly awesome. All right, let the adventure continue, everyone. Let's head up, up, and up. We're going up this. This road goes up this mountain for miles and it zigzags, switchbacks, 
and it features a 10% grade. Susie, are you ready? I think so. I'm not sure. You got this, girl. What have we gotten into? <laughs> Susie and I just finished up with the Moki Dugway. That is an awesome road. If you look carefully, you can find multiple vehicles that have fallen off that road, smashed into the rocks. Now we are on some dirt road. I believe this is the Muley Point Road. Supposedly this goes out to the edge of a cliff and it gives you like this amazing view. It is in the afternoon and we have found our campsite and home for the night. We came up to Muley Point and there are some amazing campsites up here. It is not very busy so we basically had our pick of all of them. We have a perfect spot on the side of a cliff. We can see Monument Valley. We have an amazing view and now we are resting. This is one incredible place. I tell you, it is awesome. It's also windy but that's the price you pay for sleeping on a cliff. It is worth it. One windy night to sleep on a cliff. I mean, wait until you see the view, folks. <laughs> it's unreal. We have Drifter down here, and that is our view. Well, everyone, after hours and hours of battling the wind, we gave up. We moved. We're amongst the trees here. We're sheltered. It's breezy, but it's not windy. Back there, I mean, the truck was just rocking. It really was. A van pulled in, and they were setting up like the, uh, they have a, one of those tents on top of it. They're not going to be able to sleep at all tonight. Not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, we got to hang out all day and enjoy the view. Now we're gonna hide in the trees and that way we can cook dinner and be outside some. It was just so windy. Yeah. Let's cook. I'm hungry. How hungry? about you? Time yeah. Time to cook? Let's make some tacos. Okay. It is taco Thursday. Yeah, we're in Utah. And they're known for their tacos. On Thursdays. Once again, we are hiding inside of the truck from the wind. This is a ton better, but... <laughs> Still windy. Still windy. <laughs> we have hard shell tacos and soft shell tacos. Mm. Mm. They look great. Yes. We make awesome tacos. We do. After talking and discussing what comes next for us, we have decided that tomorrow we will start making our way back to North Carolina. Before we came out here and we were planning the trip, we tried to look ahead as far as weather, and so we had planned to go into Colorado. And it seemed like it might be possible, but after looking at the weather now, they are very cold and it seemed like they had a warm-up and now they're back to being very cold. We were really hoping to stay in the 30 to 40 degree range at nighttime and it doesn't look like that's possible. On Friday when we would hit Colorado, it's only supposed to be like 19 degrees mm -hmm. and when you're sleeping inside of the truck, it's a tin can and it is chilly. So we have decided we need to stay down south and we need to trek back with a more southern route. So we are going to hit the road, 
head back, do some camping along the way, mm -hmm. and get back to North Carolina. The truth is, is this is our first road trip of 2021. We plan to do many more, mm -hmm. and hopefully as the year progresses, we will make the time to stay out longer and see more things, but I feel like we've had a great time. Oh, yeah. We've done multiple things, and I really enjoyed like taking our time. We cruised out here. I mean, we had stops along the way. We did the backpacking trip, the Valley of the Gods, and this trip. Now it's another adventure. We're heading home. Every day when you're on the road is an adventure. You have no idea what's going to happen, what you're going to see. I love it. Oh, look at that dirt. Oh, oh. that dirt. Oh, no. <laughs> Woo. What a windstorm. <laughs> It wow. changed its mind and it blew did. dirt into the truck. <laughs> I love sand with my tacos. Everything is covered in sand. It is. That's crazy. Good morning, everyone. It is a super windy morning here in Utah. It calmed down yesterday became super nice and then last night it just picked up and <laughs> thank god we did not sleep out there on that cliff i can't even imagine what it's like all night long we heard vehicles leaving from there just taking off it's a little much it is all right well we are getting ready we are getting basically ready to hit the road it is time for susie and i to go home are you ready? I am ready. It's been an awesome, awesome adventure. It really has. We had a full week of exploration. We had two very different trips. I think we did what we came out here to do, and now it's time to go back to North Carolina. So far, this adventure has been absolutely incredible. We had the road trip out to New Mexico. We did some backpacking, off-trail exploring. Then we went into Utah, explored Valley of the Gods, the Moki Dugway, and now we are headed home. This is the final part. This will summarize the entire trip. At the very end of this episode, we will go over all of the stats for this trip how much it cost, how much fuel we used, how much water we consumed, the most common found broken down vehicle on the road. <laughs> There's all sorts of pointless stats coming up. But now folks, we head east. North Carolina is calling us home, so we have to go back to the mountains. We have to get back to a world of green where there's no sand, no dust. <laughs> yeah, and the sun isn't as mean where we live. That's true. So true. But I will share one stat right now. We have zero sunburns. So we did our trip right. We were smart. We win. We win. The desert is so interesting. It's been a great trip. It really has. The desert really is a brutal environment. It's a beautiful environment though. You have to visit it at the bright time. Where we are at here in Utah, the temperature in the summertime gets over 110 degrees. And that's only magnified once the sun is hitting the sand and coming back up, so it's even hotter. We are out here, the highs have been around 70, something like that, and it is so hot that you can just take it for just a little while. It is brutal.
The first stop of the day is in Farmington, New Mexico. We are going to hit up a Walmart and resupply. We need to, not only do we need to resupply, but we need to get rid of some garbage. We have three huge bags of trash. And that's because we've been out in the middle of nowhere for quite a while now. So we need to grab some water, grab some food. Utah has been absolutely amazing. New Mexico, amazing. These are two states that you have to go check out. You have to go explore. Do some research. You can find all sorts of stuff online. These two states are the perfect places for you to create your own adventure. You can pick and choose what you want to do. And that's what I really like about it. And that's what I've enjoyed the most about it. We've made it to Walmart in New Mexico. It's time to resupply and also grab some lunch. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah. So let's do this. We'll show you all what we bought when we get back. We finished up with our supply run at Walmart. We only needed a few things and one water jug that should set us up until we get back home to North Carolina. We also grabbed some chicken sandwiches from Walmart's deli for our lunch. We are gonna make our game plan for what comes next and where we're headed to while we eat. This is not the first time that we had to refuel on water or fill up again. So last time we grabbed two, two and a half gallon jugs of water. So we go to check out, I grab one nice and easy, super gentle, put it down on the conveyor belt. I grab the other one with all of my strength and just pull that thing up. The force, <laughs> ejects the nozzle from the jug. It throws water on Susie. I get covered in water. <laughs> it throws water on the floor. It throws water on the conveyor belt. It was bad. It, it made was... a huge mess. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cashier gave me this little rag because they saw just a few spots. Didn't realize the entire thing is soaked. <laughs> I'm mopping it up. I give it back to him and I can tell he's like shocked at how soaked it is. <laughs> Mistakes were made, or as the saying goes, stakes were made. Oops. True. I learned a lesson. <laughs> this time I go in there and I'm babying that jug. Oh yeah, I wouldn't even <laughs> let him like touch it. it like keep it turned up. Oh man. Yeah, we grabbed some yogurt, some muffins, we grabbed some lunch. We're pretty good on meals. We grab some instant coffee. Yeah, that's about it. So for lunch, we're having chicken sandwiches and maybe a hot dog. Road trip food, no doubt. So here's a story for you all. We were having lunch, sitting there, and as soon as we pulled into the parking lot where we were stopping to eat at, I smelled smoke. So we're sitting there, we're eating, and noticed that the mulchy part of the parking lot in between the spaces was smoking. And then we saw the flame shoot up. So we went over there, another couple, they stopped. So we used some of our water and was able to get that down enough so that it wasn't flaming. They called 911, got the fire truck out there, and together we saved the day. You saved the New Mexico Walmart. That's what we do. Parking lot. Heck yeah. All right, we're on the road. We are heading towards Albuquerque. For tonight, I found us a campground that is still in New Mexico right before we hit Texas. I was able to use the website freecampsites.net and look for places to stop along Interstate 40. Freecampsites.net offers user pictures and reviews so you can read more about the place and find out if it is a safe area to stop.
we have made it to our destination for tonight. We are still in New Mexico, and right over here is the old Route 66. And there's all sorts of abandoned houses and buildings, all that stuff I don't care about. But the old abandoned gas station, we are definitely going to check out. This is Route 66, everyone. This used to be a hotel. It's all closed down. But there is a cool car here. Back inside of the truck, and that's because we are going to make dinner. Again, folks, it is insanely windy out there, as you all just heard. I mean, it is insane it is <laughs> so windy that we can't even cook no so we were going to make cheeseburgers but scratch that we have had to do quite a bit of cooking in the back of the truck and it really depends on what you're making if that works well for cooking up greasy cheeseburgers it's not going to work dinner is done sandwich wrap salad and some chocolate cake because why not <laughs> you need chocolate cake yeah. to fuel yourself yeah you do you guys know i love dessert after i eat she does so chocolate cake it is i'm also the driver so i think i earned it today that's true anyways uh we are in new mexico san john city town whatever this may be this is a free campsite it's a park right next to route 66. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. There's all these abandoned buildings. I guess you can go explore them. There are no no trespassing signs or anything like that. It's cool. It is cool. I found this on freecampsites.net and I like that you can read user reviews. They'll post pictures. It's really nice to use that because from that I learned that this is a safe place. It's a quiet place. It works. There's it's windy. Space. It is windy. They did <laughs> warn us. We are very close to Texas though. Like 80 miles or something but I did not want to push it and end up having to stay in a bigger city this is quiet there's a gas station down the road so we can fuel up this meets our needs perfectly perfectly yeah yeah this is gonna be a nice place to stay um, we're sharing it with three others someone with a fifth wheel an old RV and a uh, schoolie yeah <laughs> so it's not bad it's very quiet and my best advice is when you are traveling, you need to be prepared to have simple meals. If you like to cook, that's great. Have some meals you can cook, but just plan on things to not work out. So we were planning on camping here and we would cook and it would be easy, a great dinner, and it's too windy, it's not gonna work out. Yeah. So because we're prepared either way, being flexible, to me that's what a good road trip is about, being very flexible. Oh yeah, that's true. Our plan is to get up early, hit the road in the morning. We have roughly 20 hours of driving to get home. So we're gonna split that into two days, maybe three. Just kind of depends on what we feel like. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. That was a good night. It was a very good night. That was an excellent campsite. It was quiet. I slept great. Two people came in afterwards and I didn't even hear them. So very good place, very safe, well lit, which was good. And there are dumpsters there for trash. And that's kind of nice, you know, you accumulate a lot of trash while camping, overlanding. But um, yeah, it's right before eight o'clock. We are ready to hit the road. We have a big push day today. My goal is to get us all the way into Arkansas. In my way. Hit a 
Going back to what used to be home Passing by those little towns I know so well Stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every friend holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting another day Neon lights in the fast lane light Riding high, reaching for the sky I had it all but lost and fell back down again Game where every single day was a losing battle And every drink was a dead end Eyes on the goal, don't lose control I'm living fast, I've lost my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting another day This morning on the road, slept great last night. In fact, I have slept great at every single stop with this trip. There's not been one night that I didn't sleep good. I've slept great too. Even at that sketchy gas station. To sum everything up for this trip, we used Hip Camp, which is pay campsites. We used I Overlander, and that finds free campsites. And we also used freecampsites.net, which finds free campsites. And I think it worked out really well, and I slept great at all of them. But when you are traveling and you have to stop and you're forced to use a rest area or a gas station, it works too. They can be noisy, they can be more lighting around, and sometimes it can make it hard to sleep. But usually you're tired enough and it's not been an issue for us. But I think my favorite campsites have been the ones that aren't at the gas stations and rest areas. It just seems like you get a little bit more privacy. You don't have to be as discreet. And for me, it just worked out better. In addition to those, we've used Gaia GPS, The Dirt, Google Earth actually helps out quite a bit. And with all of those apps, they covered our needs for this trip. If it sounds like it takes a lot of work to plan this sort of trip, well, it does. And you need to know when to use the right app. For an example, Google Maps works great on pavement, but as soon as you get off pavement, that thing just goes all to hell. So that's when you need to flip over, use something like Gaia GPS. You can trail the map as you go. It works very, very well. Hey everybody, we are now in Tennessee, heading towards Nashville, and that means that Susie and I are almost home. We'll be there by probably like 8 o'clock tonight, something like that. This has been the best road trip I've ever done. I've been across the country five times now, and this by far is the best trip ever. I am so glad to have done it with Susie. Susie is amazing. I love you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, babe. Thank you. I think this was the best road trip that we've done yet. We did our last trip to Colorado. We've done this one. And then uh, I sort of count the, the road trip that we did to see Madison graduate from boot camp. I kind of count that as a big road trip, even though that was something we did just for personal reasons. But uh, that was a, maybe the first time I started really driving long distances across the country. But I would say this is the best one, the best experience. Everything has been really smooth. I will say the only casualty that we've had 
bad is that we did have a rock chip our windshield in Albuquerque. It happens when you're traveling, a rock just hit it and it definitely chipped it. So in the future, we may need to repair that if it decides to crack more. Not a big deal, but it's really went smooth. I would not have wanted to do this with anybody but you. With the windshield, that's just a small battle scar. And if we can get home and that's the only problem, we win. <laughs> that's right, winning. Yeah, winning. Okay, so as we wrap this up, let's ask some questions and let's answer some questions, okay? Okay. So I've been thinking about this for a little bit and I've made a list here. These are questions that you all want to know the answer to. Susie, what has been your favorite part of this adventure? It is really hard to pick. I'll just choose one and I think my absolute favorite part of this trip was Valley of the Gods. That place is stunning. For myself, my favorite part was hiking in New Mexico. Day two, we were backpacking. We were hiking through this like landscape where the ground seemed almost like crumbly lava flow and it just kind of dipped down and it was wavy and I've never seen anything like it before. It was just such a surreal place to be. Okay, worst part of this trip. The worst part for me was the wind because it made it very cold and we didn't get to have as many shower days as I would have liked because we've been gone from home for quite a while and we have a good shower system and due to the wind it just did not work out it was freezing cold for me the worst part was the sand and the dust there's not a single inch inside of this vehicle in the back inside of my head that doesn't have dust in it or on it everything is covered in dust <laughs> we were cruising down the road i had my window open and i didn't even think about it and we looked down and like the entire vehicle was just covered no 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 no, no. <laughs> let, let me tell this story. okay okay so on this trip luke consistently kept putting down his window and anytime he would jump out of the truck to do some filming i would roll his window up he came back to the truck and he was like why does my window keep getting rolled up like i want it down and i said well take a look like it's letting in so much dust i'm having a hard time breathing there's dust everywhere in this truck and it's because of your window. And you could see like it hit him. He just realized and he was like, oh. I was like, oh, f <laughs> Like the entire vehicle is covered in dust. Yeah. Uh, that's all on me. Seriously, we're like draw drawing <laughs> pictures in the dust on our dash. It's because true. it's so dusty. <laughs> I messed up folks, I messed up. What was your favorite state? My favorite state is Utah. What was the worst state? I guess my least favorite state on this trip is Texas. We only went through a small part. For me, the worst state is Tennessee. I've never liked the drive out through here. It's long, it's boring, you have to hit all these major cities, and the roads are just okay. So, yeah. My least favorite state is Tennessee. Tennessee. I'm back, I've changed my answer. I am still stuck in Tennessee driving. There has been at least five accidents. We're only mid-afternoon. The cars on the road are in the worst condition. They can't even go the speed limit. I'm getting super frustrated and we can't tell, so I'm changing my answer. The worst state is Tennessee. That's Told all I have you. to say. Tennessee, you suck. For this adventure, that wraps it up. This is the very first epic road trip of 2021. Listen to that exhaust. Woo. This has been an incredible trip. I want to thank you all so very much for joining us. If you have any questions about our trip or anything that you've seen, the gear, shoot us an email. We're happy to help you out. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel on YouTube, on Patreon. We do these adventures so we can share with you all the world that we live in. There's a lot of beauty out there and we want to share it with you all. All right, coming up are all sorts of stats about this trip, including how much we spent for the entire trip, how much we spent on fuel, the most common broken down vehicle, and so on. So make sure to hit the thumbs up, the like button, it does help. Subscribe. We will see you all again soon. Strength and honor. Bye, everybody.
don't move an inch It's like you're laying in the perfect light Would have been as you and me and nothing else No distractions, just attraction My inhibitions So baby Something about you makes me lose my inhibition 